Welcome back to Lumineers Archive. I am Nathan, a Lumineer 626, and we're going to bring you our next deck list, this one I call Smash and Fire. This is going to be a Steel Ruby control deck, very centralized around just doing damage to your opponent's characters or just outright removing them. So, sit back, relax, and take a look at Smash and Fire, and down in the description below will be typed out version of deck list as well as a link to seeing this deck in action. So here is Smash and Fire. So we've got Sergeant Tibbs, Captain Hook, both versions of them, Simba, uh, Prince Eric, Aladdin, Hercules, Tinkerbell, both versions, Pongo, Goofy, Mickey Mouse, Brave Little Taylor, Maleficent, Fire the Cannons, Smash, Dragonfire, and Grab Your Sword. Now, something that's going to seem a little bit of confusing to a lot of people here is that we have a lot of three ofs instead of maxing cards out at four copies. This is because you need a lot of versatility in this deck. This deck is designed as a control deck. That means you need options. So... Our low-cost cards give us some base bodies to put on board. Captain Hook answers a lot of cards. He lets you answer cards such as Cheshire Cat makes and the yellow Simba. So this makes him very good. The Simba we have here lets us filter our hand, and Sergeant Tibbs just gives us a base 2-2. Our other one-cost card is Fire the Cannons. This is one of our key sources of removal. And it gets recursion from Captain Hook, Captain of the Jolly Roger. Now, Prince Eric is our only two cost. Honestly, there are three costs that are debatably better, but we wanted to have the potential of a card to play on turn two. So that's why we went with him. Now, Aladdin, Hercules, and the filtering Tinkerbell are our three cost as well as Smash giving us another removal option. So, Aladdin here lets us disrupt our opponent's lore gain, and this is going to be our main way of keeping ourselves ahead. Tinkerbell is our ideal turn 3 play because it makes Tinkerbell Giant Fairy live on turn 4. And even if we don't have a Giant Fairy in our hand, just the threat that she could come down on turn four makes this card an insane turn three play. Now, Pongo, Captain Hook, Captain Jolly Roger, and Tinkerbell Giant Fairy are turn four plays. Like I just said, Giant Fairy is our preferred turn four play since she can potentially clear board on turn four. Goofy is our only character on turn five, but we have the option of Dragon Fire and Grab Your Sword as well. Now, with Grab Your Sword being a song, it can come down on turn four because we could shift into Giant Fairy and then use her to sing Grab Your Sword. So you could actually do three damage to your opponent's entire board without attacking at all, making our board clearing very, very good. Now, Mickey Mouse, Brave Little Taylor, and Maleficent are two high-costed cards. In all honesty, we really only want to see one over the course of the game. That's why we're at three here, because we're only going to play one. If we see them too early, we're either going to hold on or they're just going to go straight into ink, and we're going to hope we're going to see one of the other copies later. So, that's the deck. Main strategy of the deck is just to control your opponent's board, remove characters. The moment you have them out of resources, that's when you start going and questing and taking control of the game. If you drop Brave Little Taylor, he's going to town and he's just going to start getting you huge amounts. Same thing for Goofy. Take advantage of that evasive. Most decks cannot counter evasive and just go to town. So, that's Smash and Fire. 
check the description down below for the link to see this deck in action. And we look forward to seeing you 